Words are hard. Hello and welcome back to the Charm YouTube channel. Today we are going over how you can build a Kanban for your terminal. First things first is we are going to create the project repo. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna call it CanCLI because we're super creative with our naming. And then here, what we can do is we can either start with our main.go file or we can do go mod init. Oops, that's my bad. Go mod init, uh, CanCLI demo. And we can go ahead and get started with creating our main.go. So here, of course, it's gonna be package main. Um, by the way, this tutorial assumes that you have a, an existing knowledge of Golang and we're basically just mostly focusing on those who don't have a knowledge of bubble tea or want a tutorial on how to build something with bubble tea specifically. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a single list with custom tasks. Currently the list models accept list.items as the interface for like list items. And we wanna customize that a little bit. So after we've done that, we've populated some mock data. We'll go ahead and create a list of lists because basically we're gonna want it where we've got our to-do list we've got our in progress list and we've got our done list. So go ahead and do that. Number three is that we are going to customize the styling of the list, get it all nice and styled before we add more functionality to it. Number four is we are going to move the tasks so you can move them around between lists. So you can bring it from to do to in progress to done back to to do. And then we are going to create a new task for whatever is the current list. That's all the functionality that we're going to be doing for this tutorial. And we'll go ahead and get started with the basics. So let's go ahead and create a single list with custom tasks. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to create a single list. So here we're gonna have package main. We can go ahead and just do a, I guess we might as well define our like unique type, okay? So we'll go ahead and do type task. We'll create a struct for that. And basically this is just implementing the uh, list.item interface. So we'll go ahead and we need a title and a description because we'll be needing to call those values as part of the interface. So we'll go ahead, do status, which is gonna be an enum. For now we can probably just do, um, yeah, we'll just do status status and then i'll create a const for that so we'll go ahead do type status is an int and then we'll do const we'll do uh we'll do to do is type status and iota and then we'll go ahead and do in progress and then we'll go ahead and do done so these will basically be indices uh, to determine like which list is focused and all of that. Anyway, we're not getting fully, fully into that, but we do need that associated with the task so that we can know which list the task lives in and move it, update it accordingly. And then we'll go ahead and do title, just title, which is a string, description, and that should be all of the values that we need. And then we'll go ahead and implement the list.item interface so that we can sub it into our lists. So for this one, we need filter value. which returns a string. And this is basically just telling it when we wanna filter through the list, are we filtering through the description, the title, what attribute are we using to filter? So we can go ahead and just do t.title. And then we gotta return the title. Go ahead, do title. And that will return a string. And here we can just return once again, Typing is hard, t.title. And then we'll go ahead and do another one. T task description. And this of course as well is a string. Return t.description. Perfect. 
and then that should be the basics for our task. So just to organize, because I'm pretty much just working in the one file for now. Um, just going to have some comments to like organize it so it's a little easier. There we go. All right, perfect. And my linter is gonna keep yelling at me until we decide to do something with those, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, so then the next thing that we are going to do is we're gonna go ahead and create a model that's going to be holding the list and holding the, um, this is basically like our main model. It's holding all of the lists and then these lists contain the tasks, okay? So we'll go ahead and do a little comment here from main model. And then we'll go ahead and define that. So that is going to be just a type model and it's gonna be another data structure. In this case, at this point, we don't really need much more than the list that we're about to create and maybe an error mess, maybe like an error field in case we decide that we want to display an error to the user at some point not a bad idea to have that in there. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we will go ahead and populate the list. Perfect, so we'll go ahead and populate the list. So we'll do a function where we modify the model directly. And we'll just do init list. And then in this case, we'll do m.list uh, is equal to a new list. So this would be list.new, list.new. And that's gonna be an array of list.items. But we don't need to have that initialized immediately. You'll see why I'm doing it this way when we start dealing with more lists. Um, but for now, we're basically just gonna initialize like a default blank list as a template and then we'll go ahead and add like set all of the items outside of the that initialization so we're going to do list dot new default delegate uh new default delegates so why that's not oh i think it's uh the wrong no, that's right uh not this one though there we go. There we go. Okay, perfect, perfect. Array of a list.item. Go ahead and do that. And then we're going to do m.list.title is equal to, we'll just start with our to-do list, okay? So we're gonna do set the title, we're gonna set the contents, dot set items, and then we'll go ahead and do an array of list.items. And then we'll do, let's create a task. This one, we'll say the status is to do. We'll say the title is uh, buy milk. And then the description will be strawberry milk. Okay. And then we'll just copy that, paste it a couple times. And then we'll change it a little bit. So let's change this to um, eat sushi. And we'll change this one to what kind of sushi? Let's say a negitoro roll and miso soup and rice. Okay. And then this one we will change to full laundry because adulting is hard. Or wear wrinkly t-shirts. Okay. All right, perfect. And then let's just save that and just do a little go mod tidy, just in case, clean it up, make sure that all of our imports are resolving properly. And then we can go ahead and open up our main.go again. So let's see if we have list.new. I think I am missing some. What does it need? It needs items, it means needs a delegate, it needs a width and a height. So basically what this means is this init list, we're going to put that when we start up our application, when we know that the, um, basically when we get like a window size message, which is 
on startup, it basically grabs the size of the terminal window and then we can adjust accordingly. So I'll put a little to do here of let's call this uh, call this on t dot window size message. All right. And then here we'll do let's just do width and height and we'll pass that in width height and those will be probably ints. All right, perfect. Okay. So we can go ahead and actually we yeah, we can get rid of this error for now. I don't think we're really gonna use it. I don't think it matters too much. All right, perfect. So what we can do is we can go ahead and make our model a bubble T model. So we'll just create, just get rid of some of these errors. We'll just go ahead and or warnings and go ahead and create that. So this can just return nil because we don't have, it's not like we have a timer or anything that we want to like start up right away when the program starts. So you can just leave that as nil. We'll do an update where now we have a message and it is a T message. And then we are returning a t.model and a t.command. And from this right now, the only thing that we have is the list. So we can go ahead and just return our model and um, do an update to the list because we're pretty much just passing all of our interactions, all of our key presses, everything to the list model. And we don't have any logic or anything like that that we really need to handle right now. So we'll just go ahead and keep it simple and just do m.list dot update and pass the message. And then this is gonna be a two value thing. So what we actually might wanna do, let's do something more like, oopsies. Let's do something more like this where let's do m.list is basically gonna equal the updated value of itself. And then we're also gonna have a command and then we'll return the command. And then we just need to declare what the heck that variable is. So we'll do var cmd is a t.command. command. And right now it still doesn't, it hasn't realized that we've, we haven't implemented that uh, t.model interface yet. So we'll go ahead and finish doing that. And then it'll, that error will go away. So here view, we've got a string, forgot this. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Okay, and then here we can return m.list.view because all we need to see is that one list right now. We'll go ahead and do that. I think, right, we do need to initialize the list as well. So let's add that functionality real quick. So let's do a quick little switch case. We're gonna do a message, assign that to the um, message.type. So depending on the type of T message that we're getting, um, we're gonna handle that differently. So we'll go ahead and do case for t.key message, which is basically any key press, uh, which we don't actually need yet. We'll do a window size message, which is the message that we get on program startup that gives us the dimensions of the terminal. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then from there, let's do, let's call m.init init list. Let's get the message.width and we'll get the message.height. Send those in there and that should work. There may be some a little bit of delay, but we'll we'll see what we can do. So we'll go ahead and run that and see what, what it looks like. Function main is undeclared. Okay, right, of course. <laughs> so one thing that we kind of forgot to do is to create the main method. We go ahead and actually start the program. So let's go ahead and do that.
Okay, perfect. So we've got our main. Let's go ahead and create create the thing. Okay, so um, we are gonna have to create a new model. So we put we should probably have a function for just like that'll give us a new model. So new. Is there anything we need to pass it? We don't need to pass it any list information. We could pass it. We could just give it a default value for error. So I don't think we need anything here. But we do want it to return. Let's get it to return a pointer to model. And then let's go ahead and return that. Let's do, I do believe it's no by default anyway. So that should be good. And yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And we gotta, we gotta use that. We gotta use it somewhere. <laughs> okay, M is equal to a new. And then we'll go ahead and do assign new program, create a new program. So T dot new program. And this one I believe takes a model, takes some program options. So if you wanna go into alt screen or anything like that, and then it returns a t.program. Okay, cool. So I think all we need in there is our model and then we'll go ahead and start it. So we'll do if error is equal to p.start, then an error does not equal nil. We'll do something about it. Okay, just print the error. Do print line the error and then we'll go ahead and do os.exit and we'll give it status code cool so i don't think we have we've got a few just unused variables and things like that so that's fine should be able to run it now it may or may not load there we go so now you can see that we've got our list you can see that we've assigned the title so the title is to do you can see what the items are you can see their descriptions all that good stuff. We can filter, so let's go ahead and find, yeah, anything with milk. As you can see, it's filtering by the title. Oops. So that's that's exactly what we want. So we can go ahead and quit out of that. Um, one thing to mention is that, as you saw here, there is this like help menu, uh, these controls. These are all built into the component itself. So we are going to have to tweak that a little bit because otherwise we're going to see these controls for every single list that we have. So if we've got like a to do in progress done and they're all showing as um, they're all showing their own little help menus, that's going to be a little bit visually distracting. So we are going to want to change tweak a little bit of it, but I think it's off to a good start. We've created our little task list.